prefer just to hang out in this exhibit. He can come and go where whatever he pleases, but he likes it here. He's here every day, all day long. He usually sleeps on the building, right the the building in the back here. Sorry, so, birds like the herons or any bird that fly, they move gradually over a six to eight week period. So they're gradually molding their feathers uh, but can remain glided. Penguins, they have this catastrophic mold. Basically, they shed all their feathers at once and the whole set of feathers comes in again at the same time uh, and it's done in a two week period. The reason is because once penguins shed their feathers, they can't go in the sea to hunt uh, because they've lost their wetsuit. So they have to get it over with very quickly. Having a fit over there. Yeah, we got a lot of penguins that are amped up today. That's for sure. Uh, now, differences between penguins and flighted birds. Birds that fly are built very light, so they can take off and get lift. Penguins are the opposite. They're super dense, heavy birds. They have to be heavier than the water so they can dive. So birds that fly have hollow bones. They have paper thin skin. They have a limited amount of musculature, almost zero body fat. Penguins are super dense, heavy birds. Uh, Gomez here, he weighs as much as these two parents together. He weighs more than an adult bald eagle does. And if a bald eagle were standing here, it'd be about this tall and have up to an eight foot wingspan. But that shows you anatomically, they're super dense. He has thick skin. He has solid bones. He has a decent layer of body fat. And he's heavily muscled. Hey, you were causing all kinds of problems. Come here. Get over here. Just here. Just stay right there. All right, I'm trying to keep my penguins in a row here. There's Maria who I was talking about with the little hutch back. Anyway, so these penguins, again, they're super dense and heavy. They're like balls of muscle. When you look at a penguin, this whole big chest that sticks out, those are huge pectoral muscles or giant chest muscles. And penguins also have... <laughs> an adapted wing structure. So, birds that fly have a movable wrist, elbow, and shoulder joint, just like we do, that all articulate to allow them to fly. In penguins, their wrist and elbow joints are fused, and the only movable joints the shoulder. In front of you, look up. See that? May I look up? Thank you, Gomez. And the reason they need those huge pecs is because in the water, there's equal resistance in both directions as they're powering through. And all that muscle allows these guys to be able to swim up to about 20 miles per hour, which is pretty amazing. Now, one of the nice things about our exhibit, which there's many, it's an amazing exhibit. For all you folks over here, keep in mind that this is just a little part of our exhibit. The whole rest of the exhibit goes down this way. Um, one of the nice things is we have a nice big pool. It's nice and long. It allows our penguins the ability to build up a lot of speed when they swim. And a lot of times when they get it really excited, uh, whether we throw them some treats like the little ocean spout or silver sides, or every Friday at 11 a.m. throughout the summer we do a live trout feed. So basically what we do is we bring in about 300 live trout. We release them in the pool to let our penguins hunt. The reason is, you know, typically we hand feed our penguins twice a day. Because we can tell a lot about what's going on with our penguins by hand feeding them. For example, uh, late winter, early spring, when we see our females eating a lot more, bulking up, that's an indication they're getting ready to lay an egg. Middle of summer, prior to molting or replacing their feathers, penguins gorge and put on a huge amount of weight. All that extra weight fuels their feather growth. If a penguin goes off feed for no apparent reason, that can be an indication of a health problem. So that's why we hand feed our penguins. Plus, everybody gets vitamins in each meal, so we want to make sure all the penguins get their vitamins. But, on Fridays, we'll give these, them their live trout. And we do that for two reasons. First of all, it's very fun and enriching for our birds. And secondly, since we do typically hand feed them, this gives you the opportunity to see them exhibit their natural feeding behaviors, which are quite amazing. Those 300 trout we put in here are usually 
gone in about five minutes. Uh, and one thing you may see is our penguins start porpoising. And porpoising is just like it sounds. It's what penguins want to swim fast. And usually it's either to come jump to a, a school of fish to hunt or a lunar predator that may be hunting them. They start popping up into the air, back down the water, just like the porpoise does. And penguins can swim faster that way for two reasons. First of all, they don't have to slow down the breathe. They take a quick breath when they pop up in the air. And secondly, since there's less resistance in the air than there is in the water, they actually get going quicker when they pop up in the air. So a lot of times you'll see our penguins doing some porpoising here because we have a really nice long exhibit. Um, okay, so a couple things, other things I just want to say about penguins. All 17 penguin species are uh, facing a lot of problems right now. They all depend on the oceans and we're overfishing our oceans. So a lot of penguins are running out of food sources. This species has been deeply impacted because where they live in Peru, about 85% of, since 1970, about 85% of all the fish where they live, the anchovies are caught up and most of them are ground into fish meal. It's a cheap source of food. Hey, Diamante, that's enough. Um, it's a cheap source of food to feed cows and pigs and fish on fish farms. Another problem, rising sea temperatures. Yeah, uh, these guys live on a desert coast, but they depend on a cold water current to survive because of their food supply. As sea temperatures rise, fish populations go further and deeper for more suitable habitat, taking them away from where the penguins live. A third problem, and this faces, we all face this problem, is all the plastic pollution in the oceans. It's predicted by 2022 there's going to be more plastic in the oceans than there are fish. We're dumping tons and tons of plastic in the oceans. It's breaking down into smaller particles. It's infiltrating everything that lives in the seas. And animals are ingesting it. There was a minky whale a couple months ago that washed up. They had 80 pounds of plastic in its stomach. All the, when I was down in Peru a few years ago, there were all kinds of penguins that were entangled in different plastic objects, including plastic bags and things. So it's a terrible thing. And I hope we can do more to uh, be responsible and clean up our ocean. And then the last thing is oil spills. Penguins have a natural ability, an amazing natural ability to stay waterproof. Right at the base of their tail, penguins have what's called a uropegial gland, or a preen gland. And sometimes when they're swimming by, you can see them rub their beak on it. And that preen gland produces oil. Oops, sorry Gomez, he's okay. These guys live in the wild. Uh, this wall here is actually 100 feet high. And there's penguins that scale this 100 foot cliff every day because they nest up on top of that cliff sometimes. So, and like I said, they're little balls of muscle. So they're little tough guys. Um, so petroleum oil strips penguins natural oils away, making them wet and hypothermic, and they usually succumb to that. All right, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and open up for questions. If anyone has any questions about the penguins, please feel free to ask. George is not happy. He's going to try to get that hair out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions about the penguin?